Good morning. Thank you for being here on this long weekend. So I got a text the other day from my brother, and attached was this picture of a small bird sitting in a plastic container filled with soapy water. And my brother was explained in his text that moments earlier, the bird had flown right into his breakfast of pancakes and maple syrup. <laughs> my brother was enjoying a relaxing morning on his patio, enjoying the sun, having some pancakes and maple syrup, and this bird decided it wanted to try some too. And my brother did try and shoo the bird away, but it was too late, and it got maple syrup all over its wings. And, and it was actually struggling quite a bit in the bushes at my brother's feet. So, having compassion for the small bird, my brother picked it up, got a container of soapy water, and attempted to wash the bird so it could fly once again. When I look around at our world, at first glance, I often think to myself, it's a pretty messed up and broken place. I often only see the small bird struggling in the bushes, covered in maple syrup, unable to fly. It can be easy to miss the compassion and grace, the soapy water, cleansing and making all things new. In the first chapter of the book of Colossians, we read the words of the Apostle Paul, who is rejoicing in, a co in the cosmic Christ. And Ephesians explains cosmic Christ as the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. And Paul is rejoicing in his lordship over all of God's good creation. We look at this sun and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, rank after rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. This passage affirms for us that we can have hope and confidence even in our broken world. That Jesus mediates God's blessings of reconciliation and grace. And the reconciliation that Paul demonstrates in this passage in Colossians, it has a universal scope, and it embodies all of creation, everything, past, present, and future. So as we think about those words this morning, do they sound familiar? Everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Or, as we say at New Hope Church, experience God everywhere. As a church community, we are striving to live into these very words spoken by the Apostle Paul thousands of years ago. God has been teaching his people this very message, that his glory abounds in all things. It was true for the people then, and it's true for us here now. He was there before any of it came into existence and holds it all together right up to this moment. And when it comes to the church, he organizes it and holds it together like a head does a body. That's a huge vision. God holds everything together by his son, Jesus, who is making all things new in the world and in the church. God's vision for New Hope Church is also a huge vision. Experience God everywhere. And you can find our vision and our mission statement on our website. We'll bring it up here on the slide. And if you haven't looked at it in a while, or maybe you've never looked at it, I would encourage you this week to go to our website and check it out. What it says is, New Hope believes that God's truth in the Bible and his truth in creation complement and enhance one another. It is only by studying both books together that we can begin to understand his vast love. 
We will create a community that can help both each other and the world recognize God's truth by engaging, engaging people where God is already at work in their lives. New Hope will create opportunities for people to continually discover faith, hope, and love together. As a church, we believe that our walk with God is integrated into all facets of our life. We want to know God and grow closer to Him in all ways. What happens at church also happens in our everyday lives, at work, at home, in our relationships. We don't want to live a life defined by dichotomy, with the world and the church being separate, but rather an all-encompassing faith, experiencing God everywhere. So not only is this a huge vision, but it's a challenging vision. As you think about these words of the Apostle Paul and about our vision here at New Hope Church, what do you think? Is this possible? Is it true? Can we experience God everywhere? I've been a member of New Hope Church for about 12 years now, and I have died to this vision, and I try to live into it daily. But I, too, have to step back from time to time and reassess and reevaluate and ask myself, is this what I believe? Am I living into this? Am I living this out in my daily life? Can I do that authentically? So why would this vision be so challenging? And I think there are a couple of fundamental reasons. First, it's not hard to see the brokenness that infects our world, our lives, and the church. There are events that each of us face that cause us to ask, where are you, God? I'm not experiencing you. I can't see you. Where are you, God? And although the church as a whole claims that we can see and know God both in his good creation and by his word, the Bible, just as we're reading in Colossians this morning, sadly, too often the church has separated itself from the world. Like the bird covered in maple syrup, the world is broken, and the church is meant to be its light, with Christ as its head. That's the church's mission and purpose. Christ and the church are the soapy water washing the bird, cleansing it, and making it new. But, and yes, there is a but, the world is also God's, and his light can be found there too. God is still working through each of us and the parables that play out in our daily lives, just as he was in biblical times. And I think sometimes... The church is quick to dismiss God's work and the movement of the Holy Spirit in the world. And if we're really honest, the church is not always the light it's called to be. It too can be broken and dark. So this passage from Colossians is a good reminder that God's message of hope in making all things new is for the world and the church. Both are a part of God's perfect plan for his creation. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. We diminish God's purpose for his good creation when we start separating our faith life from our everyday life. Now, this isn't only challenging for us today. This was also challenging for the Colossian believers that Paul was writing to. At this particular time, they were struggling with the influences of false teachers who were undermining the person and work of Jesus Christ. The true gospel and the new life that they were living into was not being accepted, and it was being questioned. And the society that they were immersed in was imperialistic. The image that shaped the Colossians' life was the Roman Empire. It was the power that dominated every aspect of their world. 
They're being taught that knowledge is key, not faith. Pluralism is rampant. There are other gods and other spiritual forces that they are to follow and entrust. And although Jesus could be one of these gods, he is not the end-all be-all, and in no way was he preeminent, surpassing all others. So in these conditions, hearing the words from Paul that Christ is above the empire and holds all things together is difficult for the Colossian believers. Does any of that sound familiar? Has our world changed that much? In many ways, the world the Colossians were living in is similar to ours today. We are inundated with the image of success financial freedom, and the aspiration of physical perfection. Knowledge is power. Pluralism is rampant. We are infected by dualism, keeping our religious and spiritual life separate from our public life. Individualism is the religion of choice. We can create our own reality and determine our own destiny. Jesus can be a part of that life, but in no way is he considered preeminent, surpassing all others, the creator and redeemer of all. Paul continues in Colossians, saying he was supreme in the beginning, and leading the resurrection parade, he is supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he's there, towering far above everything, everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms, get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood, that poured down from the cross. What beautiful words spoken about our Savior. My favorite line here is, so spacious is he, so roomy, that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Life can be so full and so busy and so hectic that this idea of space and room, it brings a sense of freedom, peace, and a deep comfort for me. There is nothing that Jesus can't handle or care for. There is room and space for all. In the Belgic Confession, which is a confessional book that the Christian Reformed Church utilizes to help explain some of its doctrines, it's a lens through which we can know God more fully. And in it, we read about the concept of providence. And this is the idea that nothing happens by chance, but all finds its purpose and meaning through God. In Article 13, which is entitled, All Governed by God, it states, This doctrine, providence, gives us unspeakable comfort, since it teaches us that nothing can happen to us by chance, but only by the arrangement of our gracious Heavenly Father, who watches over us with fatherly care, sustaining all creatures under His Lordship so that not one of the hairs on our heads, for they are all numbered, or even a little bird can fall to the ground without the will of our Father. Underneath it all, above it, beside it, around it, God is making all things new and has been from the beginning. And we can take deep comfort in knowing that. God's intention and the purpose and person of Jesus Christ, his Son, is to reconcile this world back to God, humankind, and all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus died for our salvation, and his death is a part of God's perfect plan, restoring his good creation and bringing order to the universe. God's compassion and grace comes into contact with every aspect of creation. And as it does, we are given a gift, a small glimpse into heaven on earth. This passage concludes with Paul saying these words. You yourselves are a case study of what he does. At one time you all had your backs turned to God, thinking rebellious thoughts of him, giving him trouble every chance you got. But now, by giving himself completely at the cross, actually dying for you, Christ brought you over to God's side and put your lives together whole and holy in his presence. You don't walk away from a gift like that. You stay grounded and steady in the bond of trust, constantly tuned into the message, careful not to be distracted or diverted. There is no other message, just this one. Every creature under heaven gets this same message. I, Paul, am a messenger of this message. We are called to be attentive to God and his ongoing, ever-present work, making all things new in the church and in the world. This is the message. This is the huge and challenging vision that we as a church community, as families, and as individuals are called to live into and live out in all we do and in all we are. How could we walk away from a gift like that? In the midst of writing this message this morning, for this morning, uh, my family and I moved from Calgary to Cochrane. Jay and I have moved a lot in our life, but we've never moved with kids before. And for little people, they have a lot of stuff. I was really kind of taken aback by that. <clears throat> and Jay and I don't mind living in the boxes, but for our children's safety and stability, we felt like we needed to get things unpacked and settled um, quickly. So needless to say, the last uh, few weeks have been an exhausting. I have felt a bit of exhaustion, and I have felt very overwhelmed, um, which at a time that was supposed to be happy and exciting. And we're getting there, don't get me wrong, but it's been a bit trying. So I was happy to have a quiet morning a couple weekends ago to drive into Calgary. It was a Saturday morning, and I had a new hope moment when you experience God in that just so right way. Hopefully some of you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully some of you have had a new hope moment. And as I left Cochrane, the air was cool and there was a thick fog on the highway. Not having driven this stretch of road that often yet, um, I was a bit nervous, but I figured the road is straight, I should just keep going forward, I'll be okay. And as I reached the city limits, the fog finally lifted, and in my rearview mirror, I could see mountains, and in front of me, the city, which for a rare moment was quiet and still. I couldn't help but give thanks to God for his abundance, his abundant creation that just seemed to encircle me in that moment. It truly, for me, was a glimpse of heaven on earth. Magnificent mountains towering over the landscape with rolling foothills which merged into beautiful homes, winding streets, people on bikes, walking their dogs, driving their vehicles, and then at the other end of this picture, huge buildings towering over the skyline. All of this illustrating God's handiwork. No matter where I looked in that moment, God was revealing himself to me and to the world. And it struck me that if God is making all things new in the tangible things that I can see around me, then it must be true that he is also making all things new in me. Broken and messed up, 
me. Through the busyness, the exhaustion, the blessing of a new home, the new community of Cochrane, and now on this new commute, God's purpose and order are in constant motion, reconciling us to himself. Through all things, he may work through you to make things new. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. In one of the readings assigned for school this week, I read the following. For a Christian, the works of God are means, avenues, channels for meeting God himself. As A. Plantica put it, to the believer, the world looks different. Blue skies, verdant forests, great mountains, surging ocean, friends and family, love in its many forms and manifestations. The believer sees these things as gifts from God. The entire universe takes on a different cast for him. The fundamental truth about reality is truth about a person. This person is God our Father, making all things new through his Son, Jesus, and in constant motion by the work of the Holy Spirit. We can confidently live into this message that the Apostle Paul is writing to the Colossians and our mission and vision here at New Hope Church as we learn to serve God in all we do. With the knowledge that everything finds its purpose and order in him, God is holding all things together in the church and in the world. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you that you are holding all things together. Thank you that we can have hope and confidence even when it's hard to see you or experience you, that you are there. And that you are reconciling us to you because you want a relationship with us, because you love us, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Open our hearts and minds and eyes this week as we go about our every day May we see you and know you more fully and be a part of you making all things new in us, through us, and all around us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.